Right? Come on. Come on. Be another duel. You're a Reagan Democrat. And, and last night, and I took notes on a Howard Zinn chapter I want to give you later, about okay. follow, uh, on, uh, from the Zinn Reader, which you probably have, about aggressive, aggressive liberalism, because you were talking last night about expand, you know, expanding, and you said the, the Mexican War, which now brings us from sea to sea. But I think that there's actually what can get con confused in some people's mind is a lot of the negative repercussions that happen with expansion that are not being discussed at this convention and I think and and, and I do think you're so smart and so thoughtful and it drives me nuts that you're not um, smart enough to agree no, with you. No, 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 yeah, well, I, I think you're the a problem Democrat. No, I think you're a Democrat. <laughs> and, uh, but, but beyond that I feel that this convention like most conventions, is, is very showy and very propagandistic, and a lot of the RNC videos are just, you know, obviously they're not for me. They're not targeted to me, and so uh, maybe I can't appreciate them. But I feel like um, when Bush was speaking tonight, uh, I just feel like there's th th that he's lying to me. Like, I feel like he's treating me disrespectfully because it seems like a lot of things that he says, A, you could say, well, why, these things you say you will do, I will do, I will do. Why haven't you done them but four you years mean, ago? In all fairness now, you've, you've read the Woodward books, you've read the 9-11 Commission report, and you know he was not lying. You may not like the guy, and I understand, you may not like his policies, but you know, because you've read those books, he is not lying to anybody, and your party should stop saying the man is lying, because well, he is not. Well, well, Ron, with all due respect, what in those uh, two documents suggests that he's not lying? Well, Lee Hamilton well, no. and Tom Cade said he was not lying. I'll tell you something about the, why we have to wait, question. Wait, hold on. Let, let's, let's get a little more specific okay. and talk about, let, let's talk specifically about what you think George Bush is lying about. WMDs, well, listen, yellow I cake, think it's uranium, clear what? That he sold the war in Iraq because there was an imminent danger to Americans. And that was clear that it, there based, was based on WMDs. Well, listen, WMDs is a very vague term. Right. It takes it takes a ton of rice and to kill a hundred people on a battlefield. It is not a weapon that posed an imminent threat to right. this country. Now, George Tenet may have said it's a slam dunk that there's weapons of mass destruction there, and I think people could have uh, guessed that you'd find some rice and maybe some anthrax. I mean, we sold it to him ten years earlier. Perhaps it would but still Sam, be around. Is it fair but that does not. But George Tenet Ron, hold on. Hold the direct hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, that does not mean that this country was under an imminent threat and that is the way that that was sold to this country and that's why we went to war and in fact there was no Sam, imminent threat. All right. Sam, I would challenge you to say where he said an imminent threat. That is a myth. If you want to tell the American public that the president and this administration was not implying that and, and Cheney said it many times that there was nuclear capacity Im and yes. imminent. Never used the word imminent. Okay, well, it. if you want to tell the American all, all people the that they were not under threat from Saddam Hussein and that this was a war of choice, that would be the truth. So yeah. you don't feel challenged by Saddam being alive in a post 9 11 world with his policies, his power, and his sympathy? I feel far more challenged now weapons. with a failed state in Afghanistan and a failed state in Iraq, failed which is what we have. Afghanistan. You yes. think it was better before when the Taliban were beating women on the street for being women? I'll tell you something. That the Taliban, uh, Ahmed Karzai has invited the Taliban into his next government. The, the Taliban, Taliban still exists. The, the Taliban still exists. They, they don't have the George same control, Bush, but they're not, they're not eliminated. They're not eliminated. They still are yeah, there. Hold on a second. And hold on. Let, even let, in Kabul, even in Kabul, you have terrorists man. blowing up trucks. You have terrorists blowing up cars. Janine, Sam, can I ask you a question? President Kerry on November 5th is faced with an Iran that is going nuclear. The UN is feckless, won't do anything. The EU says, yeah, they're going nuclear, but we can't do anything about it. What does President Kerry do about Iran? He waits for attack. I trust John Kerry's no, judgment far more about any situation Sam, that comes up. What does he do? I am not qualified to be president. I'm saying John Kerry is. But you're qualified and to I've defend seen, what he'll do. I've seen what, what uh, George Bush has done, and this country's seen what he's done the past four Sam, years, and it's been nothing. What would you suggest what President he... Kerry do faced with a nuclear Iraq that the EU and UN will do nothing about? I Are can you prepared to say I can assure you acceptable. John Kerry will not appoint me in a position where I'll have to make that decision. But I trust him more than I trust George Bush. Let's hold, let's hold it right there. Hold on, applause line. Great applause line. Give him applause. Very good. All right, I'll tell you what. I want you all to stick around. We're going to be holding you over. We'll be right back in a second. We're going to be taking your phone calls. 888-MSNBC-USA. That and much more when After Hours returns. I'm a big fan. Bye from Square. <laughs>
to MSNBC's After Hours. We're live, of course, from Herald Square. Last night of the Republican convention, George Bush took to the stage and actually delivered a pretty good speech uh, rhetorically. And Susan Molinari, I, I, again, this is a guy that doesn't do well in formal situations. But, you know, we have this debate that's been raging now for about a year and a half uh, leading up to the war in Iraq. I think, though, we're about to go into a different phase, and I want to ask all of you about this. You know, it's very interesting. John Kerry takes the stage, and he starts talking about domestic policies tonight, which I believe is the Republican Party's weakness in this campaign. He's, I think he's going to try to leave Iraq behind, leave the war on terror behind. It's very interesting. George Bush's campaign has been exclusively talking about John Kerry. But we see the script tonight of a new commercial coming out tomorrow, and they're talking about domestic policy. Are these debates going to be a thing of the past as we go into the last 60 days of this campaign? Well, no, obviously the debate over the, the war in Iraq and liberty and the position of our troops around the, the globe and protection from terrorism is going to be a discussion that we're probably going to have in every presidential election in our lifetime. Um, and certainly um, it's not going to go away um, from now till November. But yes, the campaigns have turned a corner, and I think you heard it um, from President Bush tonight, where he spent a significant portion of the front part of his speech doing a whole laundry list of domestic agenda reforms that, he, that has taken place during his last four years and what his priorities are going to be over the next four years. And so I do think that um, uh, the new ideas, the new initiatives, the new Bush vision for the domestic agenda was the beginning of which was laid out this evening. Oh, so Janine, I've been asking this question all week. I want to ask it of you also. We hear about Iraq. We see protesters in the street. It seems people on the right, people on the left want to talk about Iraq, want to talk about the war on terror. But in these swing states like Ohio and Iowa, what do you think, say, a paralegal that makes $22,000, $23,000 a year is more worried about as a single mom? Do you think they're worried about Iraq and the war on terror? Or do you think they're worried about losing their job and wondering where the hell they're going to get health insurance to take care of their kids? I would say they're extremely concerned about domestic issues, much more so. But then, of course, there's always the uh, fear factor that the administration constantly pushes upon us. They, they need to use anxiety to try and push that to the forefront because I guess polling shows that Bush does very well. If people are frightened and they think of national security and he does very poorly, if you're talking about domestic issues like health care and the economy and uh, education and things of that nature. And I think that, uh, unfortunately for most people, they're pretty selfish with their voting and it tends to always come down to money. And we're not, we're not a very communitarian society in that way. And that's why taxes, I mean, ta no taxes, the claims of no taxes, seems to really motivate people when unfortunately I think what is lost is the message of we do need to pay into the system. Taxes are part of our responsibility as a citizen. You need to pay taxes for the infrastructure to function. You need to pay taxes to pay for education. You need to pay taxes to pay for the military. You need to pay taxes for the highways that we drive on. And, uh, you know, the ownership society that George Bush talks about so much, really what it seems like to me is what he's saying is I'm going to take taxes away from people who make their money through investments. But uh, if, you're, if you're trying to save money or if you can't save money because you're living from paycheck to paycheck, you're sort of out of luck. It's, it, they're sort of, they're, the ownership society to me seems like a real Trojan horse. And I apologize for using lame, a real Trojan horse. I sound like a pundit there. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think Which that... doesn't make you a bad person. No, it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make me a bad person, but it makes me feel, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm just uh, being too repetitive. But I think that ownership society seems like a scam uh, and, I, and, and like death tax uh, is... Uh, can't stand things like that. It's an estate tax. It's an estate tax, like partial birth abortion. It doesn't exist. There's dilation extraction. That's like calling an, a, an appendectomy an organ ripper. You know what I mean? It's just false language that is there to try and, and con people into voting against their better interests. All right, Janine Garofalo, as always, wonderful punditry. Sam, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you, Joe. And, and, and congratulations. Air America is on the march. Uh, you're just picking that, up new affiliates every day. Actually. You're, you're actually, your your grades are actually much better than mine were in high school. It's not saying a lot, but it's a start. Right? Yeah, it's a you two can grow up Thanks to be Joe Scarborough. Yeah, nah, <laughs> I, I think you just insulted him. <laughs> the, the Republican convention may be after over, but after hours wrap parties are just getting started. You're not going to want to miss a minute of it. Taking us to break is Matt Shulman and the Shulman System Trio. We'll be right back.